Uh, hello everybody, Dushan here from How to Rhino. Welcome to the second episode of How to Rhino podcast. Uh, this is the podcast where we talk with young architects and we share their life stories. So uh, today I would like to present my friends Susana Jakic and Diana Kostic. Uh, they are the founders of Focal Studio and today we're gonna share their story. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, like this video, share it with your friends and consider supporting us on Patreon. So, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dushan. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting us here. Sure, my pleasure. So, first off, let's just start with the beginnings. Like, how did it all start for you? How did you guys meet? And tell us a little bit about that. Oh, uh, okay. We met through um, a mutual friend mm -hmm. at university. Um, and I think the first time we started like sharing some professional talked about like professional stuff was um, at this class that we had together it was a studio project um, and it was a time where we were kind of having um, a lot of difficulty with the, with the project we were working on so uh, we talked uh, constantly on the phone complaining and uh, trying to Our figure out are always uh, complaining yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <Already know. laughs> so we were kind of trying to to help each other to uh, push the project further and basically like uh, how to how to, I don't know how to begin how to to finish how to push push the ideas and mm -hmm. that was something that the time that we started like uh, like early beginning yeah, yeah. and uh, when we actually started working together was um, next year when mm -hmm. we uh, spent some more time together at my grandparents uh, where we went to to do a model at my like models for her and for for my project. Uh, to uh, my grandfather's workshop. So we spent like some seven days together and that's where we, and when we realized that we actually share like uh, similar, like the same language for architecture and that we... Yeah. Uh, it was like no, wi no Wi-Fi in the forest, yeah. only doing some physical models. Made Nature and architecture and yeah. you too. Yeah, cool, and cool. that's where a lot of for wood first we start. <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, we previously discussed that your grandfather uh, was helping you on studio yeah. project to yeah, with the physical models. Yeah, he was always helping me with models, yeah. And my grandfather and my father, they, they have this um, small workshop, so mm -hmm. I, that's where I kind of started to... I, I think my love for architecture started there. And not just architecture, but all hands-on stuff, so... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's where you first met. You you saw that you can work together, and then what was the next step? Like, what 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 was the next like approach? Like, did you talk about okay, let's create something together, or mm, like, not or exactly. it, it happened spontaneously? Yeah. During the last year of the master studies, uh, I was working as a graphic designer in tourist agency, mm -hmm. and. Um, our first client was actually a, an owner from that uh, from that uh, agency and he wanted to start some mix of nightclub and disco grill and some it was like some kind of hybrid and mm -hmm. uh, at that time Tiana was already starting with some projects in in London so I asked her to help me because she already had some experience uh, experience yeah. yeah so that's actually the first project we project we started working together mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it was uh, it was very interesting because uh, neither of us had experience, like practical experience, at the time in, yeah. in architecture, in construction. Or, so, uh, and that that particular project was very we were very lucky to 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 start start yeah. our paths working on that project. But it was all really like a freelance, some kind of we were I don't know. You were doing it as like a freelancing type of thing. It's, it yeah. was not official, like. And it was totally freestyle architecture uh -huh. <laughs> kind of thing. Also, yeah, you had, like... had freedom to experiment. Yeah. So the brief was very open, and um, the owner of the tourist agency, the client, was mm -hmm. very willing to work with young architects, and he was hoping to get some fresh ideas. Okay, so you so you haven't had any kind of like very strict brief you you had like open uh, it was actually interpretation not so strict it mm -hmm. was like we were there from the beginning we were mm -hmm. actually designing the brief with the client oh, cool, cool, so cool. that was like totally from the beginning yeah. it was the most interesting part for so, us so so what about you mentioned regulations and construction rules like you had to learn this on the fly i assume like how did yeah. that happen well it was uh, it was 
the thing is, we were very enthusiastic because we it finally, after, it, after oh, this yeah, kind of yeah. <laughs> finishing on university, you kind of get set, I don't know, like a little bit bored with what mm -hmm. you were doing. And this is something that's where you watch your projects and your ideas come to life. So that's what kind uh -huh, of pushed uh -huh. us to, cool, cool. to do, to give the best that we can. So basically, and I, I again, uh, this was very interesting project. So we kind of really had an open, open brief with mm -hmm. some inputs from the client, but it was very interesting to, to kind of build up on that brief and to expand the ideas. So, so if I understood correctly, the project was type of freestyle, but what was the main purpose of the project? Like what was the, uh, the, brief. the brief? Yeah. yeah. You said you were creating it uh, with the owner. So yeah. the, what the was it all about? The location was the old brewery and uh, we needed to transform it into the, night, as I previously said, nightclub and the disco grill. So they wanted to uh -huh. make so some kind of hybrid, like firstly they wanted that place to be called like bordel so that you have you have like um, building with uh, three stories and each story is something different different yeah but at the end it was like a nightclub called uh, rockanje and it was like a rock nightclub mm -hmm. and on the top of that the, it was a food porn so it was like uh, some kind they wanted to have fast food restaurant, fast food yeah. restaurant mm -hmm. but mixed with some kind of uh, I don't know, vinyl nights and they wanted to make it some cool. uh, retro I, night. I uh, think you told me before that uh, you were experimenting with uh, some kind of uh, photographers there. They were doing some photo shoots later on in that space. Yeah, later on a lot of... Uh, it changed a lot actually, yeah, but changed. at the time that we, we <laughs> yeah. came to the space it was like... Um, Totally there was like a dormitory for workers mm -hmm. in the old brewery mm -hmm. and the whole uh, it became suddenly became just like a very there was like a boom uh, a very that part of interesting the... night district so that's why they decided that's why they decided to kind of start a business there mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. basically we we came to this uh, workers dormitory and it was completely ruined so mm -hmm. At it's the like moment when we started, sir, and the moment when we started, there was already like a few places, and we needed to make something totally different from them because it, it's sure, full sure. of uh, nightclubs. So we wanted to make something like Unique, different, special, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah, I'm, again, I'm saying like we were really enthusiastic about uh, about this uh -huh. project and just like keep experimenting and coming up with new ideas and trying all to incorporate <laughs> all of them in the in that into that space. So we had a lot of kind of. It was like a lot of ad hoc, but at the end, I think like it came out to be like really interesting, interesting mm -hmm. space. And uh, the budget was uh, like uh, limited. Okay, so the place was a brewery, and uh, the location was uh, that that was a place where some, uh, as you said, it's like a dormitory, dormitory. For, for workers in the brewery. And, and then did you like have to like uh, experiment with the walls, destroy some walls, and and make like, a complete all ruined mm -hmm. and we had a really strict budget because mm -hmm. the the lease was on three years three years yeah, it was three years mm -hmm. so three year, so no one wanted to invest a lot of money, invest a lot of money there okay, so, okay. so they wanted to to see if they can you know make the business that will get uh, they, 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 they wanted like uh, to spend um, as less money as it's possible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, to have that really, really fast because everyone was just uh, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the clubs were the just speed popping was up, important. and they wanted the, that to be like the best place. So mm -hmm. <laughs> usually that's every investor wish. Cool, cool. <laughs> so, so, so how did you manage to 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 go through all of the obstacles along the way there? Well, it was quite difficult because actually we didn't have like any experience in mm -hmm. construction and uh, with the project, especially. In it's, it's kind of a big project for us coming from the university. So, um, especially dealing with the contractor, we, and he was really like a, a difficult man. Mm -hmm. uh, Two it young was, yeah. female architects, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, that's already a big issue. <laughs> yeah, so he, he couldn't uh, stand two young girls telling him what, what to, to do. do. Yeah, yeah, they all know, know the best what they should do, of course. Yeah, exactly. But actually, they, know, they really know a lot. So we were learning a lot from mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. Of course, and it's a, it's a really um, interesting process, especially we really like this kind of 
when you come to the um, into the industry from school you, you there's kind of a real life happening there so you need to kind of understand how how things are working and you need to try adapt. to yeah, yeah you need to adapt you need to try i mean you need to learn how to communicate to push the things that you really want to push from your project so sure. it was really it was really difficult for him to understand like how the mirror he bought was not good as the one that we planned mm -hmm, in the mm -hmm. project so, and, and, or, and similar stuff so it was like social experience <laughs> yeah it's like you need to develop these social skills yeah. basically too. exactly so so it's not just about having a concept having a design it's also about communicating the design and being able to maybe persuade exactly, uh, yeah. and being able to you know as you said you're learning this on, on the fly we never learned this in school like most of us don't learn these skills so it's a process and you said like two young female architects and the man who knows what what his he job is yeah. so, he's doing that for 30 years sure, and sure. now it's sure. really so fun. so so you had a issue of positioning yourself as authority for yeah, working exactly, yeah. and then uh, i assume that over the years you found uh, the best way to approach this kind of it's just like a matter of practice i think we are still learning yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, so after that project, uh, what was your next next step after that? So during that process, uh, we, we really felt that we, that we enjoy being in that uh, client, architect, contractor chain. And we really like to work and also to improve our social skills there. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also felt that uh, no one will understand us totally serious if we are just uh, freelance architects. So. Uh, we decided to um, make it some kind of official and actually to start a firm. Uh, yeah, studio. that's how Focal started, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. So when was this? But at this? the beginning we wanted to make just uh, lamps and uh -huh. Focal was from we, Focal we knew Lamps. That we so, we to, started, yeah. Yeah. so basically we knew that we want to do something on, on our own mm -hmm. and yeah. that we don't want to kind of go back and sit in an architectural studio and just drafting so yeah. so we, we were sitting one day in a, in a park on a bench thinking like okay we need to start something but we i think it was uh it, it was a two kind of big step to declare like ourselves as our architectural company so we think we should make lamps mm -hmm. and like well, light, let's just light, well, light well, lamps. what was the uh, we needed to make something and, physical like yeah, we really so, needed to make some uh really uh, small scale and to have that like, really it is one to one scale and yeah. we are really hands on so we kind uh -huh. of like seeing something happening ideas in front of your eyes yeah, yeah. as exactly. soon as possible yeah. okay and tell me a little bit about the name so focal, focal? Uh, it's from focal length <laughs> focal length yeah. okay yeah so and it sounds really really nice you need to admit that like sure, it's only five letters <laughs> and all of them look really really nice so it was yeah, we had like a small brainstorming yeah, that day yeah. in the park and thinking like how 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 should we call our oh, our uh, studio and we just came to that name i i, I don't remember exactly we just how, agreed just and like, yeah, what, what was this year again uh 2014 14 Oh, okay, 16. I think 16. <laughs> 16. <laughs> 16. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we started like kind of working together 14, but okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. it was official. Official like, was uh, a, yeah. It was, it was so it's like four years. Four old, years. Almost four years old. Mm -hmm. All right. So you had you you made you made your name in the park and <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, four years old and yeah. What can you tell us more about that? Yeah, well, um, I, I, I think that uh, what is uh, interesting and what is like very characteristic for, for our small studio is that we kind of learn everything on the go. That, so there's like a lot of mistakes on the mm -hmm. way, but we try to learn from mistakes and try to improve ourselves and always kind of um, after projects, like do a deb debriefing and kind of try to understand how, how this could be done better. Okay. So with each and, new and project, you're making improvements. Well, we try to, mm -hmm. and I think that what is also really interesting is that because we, it was just two of us, and we started a studio, so we needed kind of to, we we, we made that decision, but and we wanted to, to kind of keep working as that. So mm -hmm. the thing is, we accepted a lot of different works, like inquiries. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is how we went in 
multiple different directions. And I think this is at these kind of couple of first years really, really good for us. Actually, Martina for all, all young architects, I think they should just um, accept, accept that. Yeah, because usually when, I mean, most of us, when we, while we are studying, we dream about some really big projects and all of us want to be some star more. architects. Yeah, yeah <laughs> and uh, I think that um, you just need to accept all these um, Options challenges and yeah, yeah. challenges. Basically. Yeah, yeah, because it, every single opportunity gives something uh, different, some different experience, and. And I you think never know where will, will that bring you. Bring you. So. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, okay, so what were some of those first projects that you had? Uh, well, I remember this first inquiry we got from the from England. It was um, for the made-to-measure glass fence and mm -hmm. wooden staircase. So when we got that, I was like totally depressed. Like, but like we are you architecture studio. Yeah, we are. We are like an architecture studio. Shouldn't we do something more architectural? And also, if we are talking about glass fence and wooden staircase, it's all it all needs to be like perfectly precise. So I was like totally out of my mind. I was like, there is no way we can do this and mm -hmm. we need to. And I was like, why? Well, it needs to be perfectly precise. We need to make some really custom package for that glass because we need to transport it to London. Mm -hmm. And we also need some packaging for these wooden staircases. And if we are some kind of studio, then we need some kind of branding <laughs> there. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, perfect. Now we have a list of what we need to do. So why don't we start with like yeah, sending inquiries in Serbia? <laughs> like we, we have it. And I was like, from almost crying mode to, okay, let's try. Let's try yeah. <laughs> yeah. So first we contacted like um, these producers mm -hmm. and they gave us prices. And the, our client in England accepted that. So after that, we, we were searching for some transport and logistic uh, company who, who can do that uh, for us. And the first company was um, we contacted um, were telling us, um, like, you need, uh, I don't know, like, this big paperwork uh, because to you know you want to you want to transfer from, something yeah. to England and you live in Serbia you know like I knew yeah, that I wanted to I wanted to tell her I knew that this is gonna be a problem but then we just luckily I think we had a lot of luck during this process mm -hmm. so <laughs> also it, it, found, it really sounds like a big challenge it, when it you was, never did it before and you're dealing with paperwork yeah, when you, when you really don't was, do something yeah. like that you think it's like oh no it's not it's nothing like it's something that you would never be able to do and uh, actually when you kind of dig a bit deeper you understand like there are of course ways and this is like something really normal mm -hmm. and people do yeah. this and there's probably the other companies that of do course, this so yeah. but there were like small small um, challenges like if you want to transport wood uh, to mm -hmm. England, then it needs to be uh, thermotreated. Like, oh, yeah, how are yeah. we going to so find that? Then, but we, we found someone who is doing that in Serbia. Uh -huh. So it just goes step by step. Yeah, it was much. like... Uh, Whatever the challenge is, okay, let's fix that challenge. Before at at, at the end, it was really good that the first thing we needed to do for England was something small. Small scale. Yeah, yeah, because we wanted to do something big, but it really needs to go step by step. Mm -hmm. At the end, we found some really good company, like a uh, transport and uh, logistic company. And when we appeared at, after this first one with this bunch of papers, they were like, okay, no one brought this before. This like, paper. we were totally, <laughs> totally informed. <laughs> and uh, it all went perfectly, perfectly well. So okay, we had okay. no problem, problems. And from that point, we started uh, working on this, uh, like networking with uh, those clients there. and. Then mm -hmm. we started getting some new uh, inquiries for bigger and bigger projects. Yeah, yeah. So, so now I'm coming back to the first project. First, you had this kind of like a project that you did for a client that you knew somehow. Yeah. And then you realized, okay, we need to increase our social skills and we need to learn how to communicate. Yeah. Then you have this first like inquiry about this job. And then you probably can see that in action right there. Plus, uh, you had all this paperwork and logistical things to take mm -hmm. care of. So now you're even more experienced. And then 
the next step is probably to okay let's let's spread out let's see what else we can do right yeah and let's try to give um like um full pack like mm -hmm. le let's try to do total design like mm -hmm. if we can transport this and we really know how to do this design mm -hmm. why don't we uh, give actually a full pack of uh, our services, services. And services. <laughs> okay okay so, so what was the next logical step for you after that did you did you did you expand in furniture or expand in expanded in interior design or you wanted to have everything at, at one uh, well, the thing is, with with the clients with, that we were working with, um, they actually wanted to. For them, it was convenient to get everything and, at the same place. Mm -hmm, so basically, mm -hmm. when we uh, were doing design, so like interior design and this, uh, uh, like drawings for for reconstruction of these uh, Victorian buildings, she was mentioning before. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, um, they saw the opportunity that. They, if we can design like the kitchens, this built-in furniture made to measure, why why not to to produce it here and to export that? So um, that's wh where we and when we expanded to to that area and okay. trying to do like not just something that um, to go a bit more into details with that built-in furniture and to look at that not just like someone else is going to do that why why don't we try to do, do everything it? yeah just but have the complete package in, in yeah exactly coding. but just like try to bring something more to that aspect of, uh, of of the interior so like try to experiment a bit more and give something more like i don't know just like make it just extra value more interesting this, yeah. because a lot of these um, uh, refurbishment projects uh, were for the apartments that were on sale Mm -hmm. So we had an idea uh, with the client that why don't we make it not just like a construct contractor contractor standard? Why don't we just improve it a little bit better and yeah, like, get more it, value out of it? Of course, yeah. yeah. So it was also um, interesting for us to to even those even if those projects were not just that like maybe interesting on like a first look. You can yeah for us so good, yes, yeah. basically. So we kind of. We design the brief for ourselves to to make it more interesting and to kind of but also to help us to to, to make something really really good because and I'm I'm assuming in, in in that like process you're also developing your own design uh, design uh, language that your studio is creating you're probably trying to uh, whatever you design that it has like as you said bring more value to the product and then later on probably the client would be also as, as happy as you are with the design. Well, actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the thing is, uh, as you said, um, the, we're, we're not actually trying to, to kind of develop our own language. We try to approach every project as like a project for has its, its own. Language. Yeah. So oh, basically, okay. what we try to do it's is not to like we are focal. This is our design. Either you like it or not. Okay, you're trying so, to to pull out the best possible design from exactly. that particular. Exactly. So, so yeah. we want to kind of. We analyze the project and see what what we can kind of how how we can upgrade that basically. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not about us and having our own like signature. It's more like what what that project needs. And sure, sure. So basically, it's it's also I think uh, it's it's not that we're sell, selling our style. Mm -hmm. So we're giving the client what he needs. So yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. one of the things that we kind of came to in this process mm -hmm. maybe it sounds like a cliche but it's like no matter how big or small the product is we have the same approach every time either it's like a furniture piece or uh, like residential uh, really? project or project. like or like staircases that we have in the beginning <laughs> so we kind of try okay it's this is not like a bad project it, it, project we need to it, it's bad if you if you make it bad, bad. but <laughs> sure. every project has like opportunity to make it like mm -hmm. really good so yeah. why don't we do that uh, okay okay so at that point you're already like developing some ideas you have both uh, furniture products you also have these residential products and we know that every architectural office has you know ups and downs and it's not always everything the best like so there's so there, right. <laughs> <laughs> there's there is some months when there's no work so did you have did you encounter this kind of uh, problems uh, well, studio. yeah. Well, luckily, uh, in this uh, lockdown time, we we didn't have that project problem. Sorry, mm -hmm. no project. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we had uh, some uh, previously agreed projects, so mm -hmm. we kind of were working on that. 
so we were lucky in that uh, in that aspect but uh, what was a bit uh, difficult at, at that point is that we kind of had to organize working from home mm-hmm. which we uh, weren't used to because we were like all of us were sitting in the same office working like that so it was a bit difficult to organize everyone we were working from home because like you have at home you have your own like uh, yeah you have and it's yeah. routine it's five yeah. of us uh, in the studio so it's mm-hmm. really I mean it's a little bit hard to manage all of that if we are not all and together and if you've never done it before uh, yeah no. exactly. you don't, maybe you don't have full control of like what well, my my architect if is our do that, work. If, if our deadline is gonna be yeah like, met. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but to to go back to your question um, we do have ups and downs but I think it's more related to how we how we see our work so basically yeah. like if we're satisfied with what we're doing or not and mm-hmm. uh, this is where we because we are at, at this stage where uh, from just the two of us uh, working as freelance and giving everything uh, hell, to yeah. that project. Mm-hmm. Uh, and kind of growing to that point that we realized that actually this is our job and we need to like Take some, it seriously. Some, yeah, <laughs> some, some business principles apply to this. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. since we like registered as a studio, so this is like a like legally com- a company, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so to say. So um, we kind of had to. So we have some outcomes. Yeah. So <laughs> also. Yeah. So basically, we realized that we need to like. Um, we need to understand that there are some like uh, financially viable projects and some that are not financially viable. So um, I guess that w- that's to where the we, right one. yeah, that that's where we need to make some balance. Mm-hmm. So basically, we kind of try to. Uh, I, I think that's where we we have these like ups and downs where we c- kind of question what we are doing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you want to grow, uh, you have to understand how how that works. So yeah. basically, uh, but I think like it's a process as well. You're also learning this yeah. on, on the fly. Yeah. So probably your next step, you think that that's something that you imagine, but maybe it's totally something else that you're not even sure. Uh, so uh, I also think that uh, you can never know, for example, one year what will bring to, to the studio. Like you never know how many potential clients course, you, may, yeah. you may have, but. I assume that what you guys are doing are trying to choose the best option for your particular studio and also to have that approach to design and to actually, you know, uh, as you said, take the most out of each project and develop it further. So uh, so my next question would be regarding the, the clients themselves, like how do you attract new clients? Do you have any kind of strategies that you're using or is it more like recommendation based? I think that for the architecture studio, it's not like the best method um, to try to find some new clients by Google Ads and uh, social networks. It, mm-hmm. It's really important for your uh, future client to see some of your work and to trust you and to hire you. So most of our projects are actually uh, recommendations from our previous, previous clients. Projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> So, uh, so you probably like you you built the client base as as, yeah. as you grow, yeah. and then I assume that naturally you would get more and more inquiries as the time goes. Yeah, so, I think the networking, like social networking, but like real social. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real interaction uh, with real yeah, people in real yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, it's the most important thing you can have. So yeah, but the thing is that you actually have to have this first client who will give you this opportunity to to prove yourself mm-hmm. and. The rest is basically on you and I don't know, like you have to to see how for, from that point how you how you're gonna present that project to that client and how you're gonna present the project to other potential clients. So they can really see what you what you did before and this is like something that's that's physical. So you're thinking so, long term in terms of okay, let's present this in the best way possible so that in the future we can actually rely on maybe uh, more work with the same client or recommendations from the same client? Yeah. Of course, yeah, but just like um, it's not only about like communicating with client. You, you need to think about communicating to the wider audience, mm-hmm. maybe to uh, I don't know other architects, other yeah. designers. Yeah. Uh, you maybe want to other collaborate. Creative co- industries. Collaborate. If we are talking about this residential project, um, 
uh, it's the going for a sale. Food. Yeah, it's going for a sale. Uh, we needed to design the brief firstly. We, we needed to communicate with the client, but that presentation is not the same for some other architects or um, other professionals from creative industries because we also want to make a collaboration with them for some further project. Sure. project. So we are uh, like our design process is much uh, longer. It's not just about the project and what you can see there. It's about uh, your way of communicating that project yeah. to, mm -hmm. to, to like different all these different mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. all these different like. So how did that process go? Like, how do you think about this? Like, like, do you think first, okay, let's, let's communicate this so that the wider audience can understand us. And then do you go from, 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 from like very big audience to very small audience in terms of, okay, let's communicate with uh, everybody and then let's communicate just with an architect and then just with a designer. Like, do you create different multiple presentations for, for each? Uh, no, it's not just, like it's we are organic, just, I no, think, it's for us. totally it's organic just... because we are making this presentation firstly for the client because he's the one for, who make who is paying the yeah. for the project, okay? Yeah, and after that uh, we have this... Um, we understand we are evaluating yeah. this project if we is it um, is it uh, understandable enough or mm -hmm. we need to have some more uh, do we need to explanations make some, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we are making so basically like how, how someone who's not uh, the client or someone who's not an architect how will how, how will they understand, understand, they understand, yeah. understand the project how will they see it so that's where we kind of select what we really want to show what is the thing that we think is Really is or yeah or, or will represent us the best so basically like you kind of design all these uh, channels of communication with different uh, different people people yeah, yeah. and so at the end when the when this project is like totally done then we start our new project like designing the photo shooting mm -hmm. <laughs> because, because, i mean designing the narrative so we we through this photo shooting, we want to show what was actually our idea. The essence idea. of the design and the project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because the most important thing is to show what uh, was your design process and not only the final product because... Uh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, and sometimes it's just like um, yeah, like it's an exploration it's just, or yeah, exper yeah. experiment yeah. that we just kind of want to do for ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... so, so uh, where do you see your studio going in the future? Like, what what are some of the aspects of all of these industries, design industries, furniture, interior design, communicating with all of these uh, different people? Like, is there is there is there something specific you want to like uh, go for, or is it also you're gonna try to find the best way for each project and? Just in general, like yeah, how do you see yourself in the future? This lockdown was also kind of inspirational mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we were we started thinking about some new projects, mm -hmm. and it's actually connected with wood pretty much. Okay. So I don't want to talk anymore about that. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <It's a serious. laughs> Sneak peek. <laughs> no, no. I'm joking, but. Uh, we have in mind um, to make a production, actually some kind of production mixed with the studio. So every time we are designing some kind of furniture or some element in the interior or exterior, uh, we really need to make that like so basically it's, it's, it would be basically like a workshop for prototyping. Yeah. So yeah. because. Uh, well, it's difficult to do it only in a 3D on a screen. It, yeah. Like you need to kind of have it in your hand. You need to try to make it to, to get through. Like sure. you need to kind of have these like uh, multiple iterations to to kind of have the final the final piece result. that mm -hmm. really yeah the final result that's something that you can decide based on all these iterations that this one is the the chosen one, the best one. Mm -hmm. So basically, mm -hmm. this is it's one of the things that we are trying to to do in some. Close future. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Maybe to make that first lamp, <laughs> we need to start with. Uh, all right. So um, right now you have you have around six, seven people. You're slowly starting to expand and, and grow, all organically through recommendations and, and doing projects with your old clients. Uh, so uh, when you're looking to hire new people, new talent, new students, like do you have some process some selective process that is you know strictly connected with your studio or is it like more general in depending on what you need at that point 
And of course, are you hiring somebody right now, maybe? <laughs> well, I think that uh, it really depends on the situation mm -hmm. and what we need at that point. But uh, I think like the crucial thing is that we kind of understand each other well and that they know that they understand what we're trying to do in, in our studio and mm -hmm. what kind of... If they you, mentioned, you mentioned that, uh, I will connect to the previous thing you said, that you uh, create presentations for different kind of people. So uh, maybe you're looking to, for people who can read that language in terms of, okay, I know what these guys are doing. I am the same in terms of my my architectural, you know, aspirations. Yeah. So, uh, so I guess that's that's the the thing that connects uh, the somebody who is hiring, somebody who is not hiring. Are you looking for any specific skills? Like, uh, like, are you looking for like I don't know, rendering capabilities, uh, 3D programs, or we is it more about for, just essential? Like, we the, are we are looking for some multifunctional people. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I'm joking <laughs> because it's really a small studio. Uh, it's really important for everyone who joined the team the, uh, that needs to uh, take their own risk for, I don't know, it, there is not specific uh, skill and like we need someone only for rendering or... Okay, okay, it's more uh, about like overall yeah, it's experience. it's like mm -hmm. totally mixed and we are actually uh, looking for some really passionate people who likes to uh, have their hands on the whole process and to understand that scale. It's mm -hmm. not like a big scale. We really need uh, yeah, we really someone who is hands on, on. who is interested in, in some of the things that we are interested in. So. All right. So I think that you guys really made a good team in terms of uh, TNA. You had a background in furniture design. You went to the, to the faculty for that in London and and so the, you are really like you have this graphic design background before and you guys managed to fuse these two and create like your brand and everything about that. So I think that's really a positive thing, you know, on this. Yeah, so we kind of tried to incorporate all the skills that we acquired on the side and through our education into the studio work. And we also want to gather like people from other disciplines and to try to keep this um, as in a, like a studio scale, not going to some kind of uh, big model, company, big company, big architecture model. company. Yeah. Sure, sure. We want to stay as small as possible and and choose to, choose the project that we're going to work on and kind of develop in the directions that we we feel are the best for us mm -hmm. and to continue with organic uh, well, growth. Grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And so, also, mm -hmm. sorry, and just one thing that. Um, I don't want people to, to understand us wrong, but the thing is that we also have this uh, moment of like very slow growth, mm -hmm. which probably like if you think, I think, well, it, it's good for us, but on the other hand, it might be like not A so, little bit too yeah, slow. Yeah. So the, the thing is that... You're comfortable kind of, with being, with going with that pace. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I so we so, are, but yeah. uh, but actually, it's not so easy to to uh, grow so fast uh, because we started, as you previously said, we sure. didn't have any uh, architectural practice uh, experience before. We started like immediately after our graduation, so we have this period of exploration and basically kind of gaining these knowledges in all sorts of different ways which are not like going to some company and not someone serves everything yeah. for you yeah. so so the grow is a bit uh, slower it's slower but it's usually. richer the yeah. thing is like mm -hmm. you it's kind of organic, you learn yeah. a lot of things from different uh, areas of work so it's not just like we were sitting in this company and we learn everything about design but kind of we, we, sit our, we, we, sit, we sit here yeah. ourselves and uh, and learned like a lot of things about um, also about management, about finances, uh, about design as well, about communication with the client, communication with other people. And sure. so this is kind of, I think, what what's good in this this sort of um, business that model. Yeah, 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 like the architectural business model. So mm -hmm. you go slower, but you kind of... You get you, more experiences yeah. in terms of other fields, not yeah. just, yeah. just okay, let's do yeah. this. We are not satisfied with just... Uh, uh, doing some drafting and then sending it and there is no reply, just uh, our bill account is like, sure, sure. Really, I mean, 
that could be nice, but uh, I think we won't go that direction. So. Well, all right. So yeah, I think that you're definitely uh, on the right path in terms of uh, the growth that you're having and also the impact that you're having. Because I really think your work is really amazing in terms of the design qualities and also the aesthetics. And uh, uh, I congratulate you for that. Uh, and I want Thank to you acknowledge, <laughs> acknowledge you as, as a young architect studio. So, so young people and young architects can see that it's possible for somebody who is a student and who you know, has the desire to open something on their own. It's possible based on your story. And it's definitely encouraging for younger architects to try, because if you don't try, you'll never know if it will if it will succeed or no. So that's one thing. And then the second thing I just wanted to, uh, for for some people who maybe want to work with you, to collaborate with you, uh, maybe some people who want to you know send their portfolios to your studio, where can they find you and how they can contact you? Yeah, so um, I guess you could just uh, leave us. Our, we'll leave the link below. Yeah, you can leave a link uh, our um, website. website. Yeah, it's uh, focal.one. Focal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, our Instagram, Instagram is the same. same. <laughs> so okay. I guess you can you could just contact us like we are Instagram. Maybe it's the easiest way yeah. or email us. Yeah, you can just you can just leave us an email. Cool, cool. So thank yeah, you thank much. you for uh, thank you for being uh, uh, the guest on How to Run a Podcast, and thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I would like to thank you for for uh, being the guest on the show, and also I'd like to thank Lazar, who is here in the background, making all of this uh, possible, <laughs> all these studio settings. Making this happen. <laughs> yeah, and you guys, if if you like this kind of content, if you like this kind of. Uh, uh, interviews that we're doing with with, with young architects uh, consider subscribing to our channel uh, and even supporting us on patreon so that we can bring more uh, more guests on the show so again uh, thank you for for joining thank you me. Dushan, for thank inviting, inviting us and i hope this was helpful it, it was <laughs> a, it was a pleasure talking with you guys with this project to start like <laughs> <laughs> so um do you want to say something more about <laughs> <laughs> so 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 this was a space of a brewery it was a brewery space with ah, uh, uh, accommodation for <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are actually gaining some new uh, clients uh, by recommendation. Recommendation. A zašto ne kažeš da će potpuno da se sve... Šta, rekao sam sve. Ali će ti početi se smiješ. Ja sam by recommendation. Upgrade it to... The next level. <laughs> yeah, I think we really complete each other and we are trying not to mix too much uh, about uh, too much. <laughs> <laughs>